What's good, everybody? What's good? It was good. Fantasy Top Four here with some more off-season files, part four, some nuggets for you. This is a quick one right here. I'm almost to my destination. Like I said, I'm just, this is just my commute in and out. Just some things that I observe as I, you know, uh, go through the fantasy landscape, see what's true and what's false. What makes sense? What don't? I mean, I mean, you think about it. A lot of these blurbs can come out, but they don't make sense if it don't make football sense. You got to know this, folks. You got to know this. If you don't make football sense, it ain't happening. It's a dream. You're playing fantasy football. It's fantasy. It's something that'll never happen. It's a dream. You don't want to be playing fantasy football. A dream. Don't take that from me, please. That's mine. That's, that's my saying. Don't take that. If you take that and say, yeah, I got that from Fantasy Top 4, please. Don't take that from me. That, that, that's all I got. That's mine. But uh, don't, if it go viral, say, yeah, Typhoon got that one. Please get that to me. That one at least. Don't take all the stuff. But, uh, yeah, don't be playing fantasy football out there, folks. What I'm, what I'm saying is, you know, you got all these blurbs coming out about all these rookies and all this stuff, and they got you looking at one thing, but does it make football sense? And you can pull your notebook out, you can pull your spreadsheets out, and you can look at the numbers, but the numbers ain't football. All right, look at it this way. It's got to happen on the field first before there, before there can ever be any any data to, data to go off of. So, in other words, if you don't know football set schemes, then you pretty much don't know fantasy. I'm going to always have an upper hand on it because I understand I look at the game. Now, I look at the stumbles too, but that's secondary. And they have their time and place. But when you are going through the blurbs and trying to see what's real and what's fake, numbers, numbers ain't got nothing to do with it. All right, for instance, uh, this Josh Hill guy, tight end for, uh, I'm talking about Dalton Kincaid right now, all right? Well, there was a blur about it. That's misleading. It's going to lead you down the wrong road. Dalton Kincaid. I'm talking about Dalton Kincaid. Now, that was a tight end for for uh, the Saints. I think his name was Josh Hill. He was coming in after... Uh, what was that tight end that they had? That that blue, I can't think of his name, man. I'm sorry, I, I can't think of all these names right now I'm driving to. But uh, then he went to Seattle. But he wasn't as good in Seattle as he was at Saints. Then he went to the Bears. I cannot think of his name. Star tight end, too. He was up there with, with Travis Kels. He was scoring points like that. He was a center that forget a tight end. But he left. Then everybody went through the target share. They automatically promoted Josh Hill. He was the next man up for the job. I think it was Josh Hill. And uh, everybody just knew, well, you look at the target share, there's there's a uh, hundred targets on the table, so let's just get old Josh Hill and keep moving. Now, fantasy don't work like that. But you got to look at the sets and schemes. You got to look at who's on the field. You got to look at who's gonna play. And I and when it, everybody was like, "Yeah, get Josh Hill, get Josh Hill, get Josh Hill," and I was the only one don't get Josh Hill. And everybody thought I was just being one of them contrarian dudes. I, that ain't what I do here. If I, if I come out against the grain, that means because I'm looking at some evidence that's showing me to go against the grain. I just, I'm not just waking up in the morning going against the grain just for, you know, popularity or for a following. That ain't, that ain't, I don't do it that way. That ain't, ain't how this works with me. I won't talk it that way. I, I got a mentor. He didn't teach me. He didn't teach me fantasy that way. But I mean, if you do it that way, go ahead. But what I'm saying is, when you looked at the, the scheme, you looked at the X wide receiver, the Z wide receiver, the Y tight end, and the E or the L for the U tight end, and, 
And the, then you got to look at the W, which is the slot. It, it didn't fit. It, it, it was too many players to fit the slot. Josh Hill didn't fit, didn't fit the slot. And everybody gave him all these points. And everybody was drafting him so high just because he had just took that tight end's place. What is that tight end name? Uh, yeah, because he took that tight end's place. But it don't work like that. Josh Hill did get no burn. I was trying to, you know, I won't, I won't, I'm not like I'm trying to tell you like I told you so, but it's got to look at it. So, like I said, this is about Dalton Kincaid. Yeah, this is about Dalton Kincaid. Dalton Kincaid. Yeah, this is about Dalton Kincaid. Yeah, so I'm still trying to find that tight end. I cannot think of his name. He went to Seattle next. Jimmy Graham. That's it. Jimmy Graham left. And then everybody just assumed that those targets laying on the floor like you're doing with Juju. I'm going to get to him in a minute. I'm going to do him probably tomorrow. I don't think I got enough time for him today. But you're looking at Juju leaving. You're looking at his targets and you're going to give them to the wrong person. But here's the thing. With Dalton with, with Kincaid, there are two slot receivers. A blurb came out that there are two slot receivers fighting over a spot. Right? And which makes you think uh, Dalton Kincaid can't get on the field. So That's where the problem's coming in. You know, first you got to look at what they're going to run. They're going to run a little 11, and they're going to run heavy 12 personnel. Well, first and second down, they're going to run 12 personnel. The wide tight end is going to be Knox, which means he's going to be on the field most, most of the time. So you're going to have uh, so your starters are going to be pretty much Diggs, of course, Gabe Davis on the other side. Now you've got who's the slot. Knox is going to be pretty much a tight end. Now you got one more, you got one more spot. So is that going to be Shakir? Justin Shorter? Uh, Kincaid, you see what I'm saying? You got those four fighting for that for that spot, but when they come out on first down, usually it should be twelve personnel. You got Kincaid on the field, so that's going to take uh, Gabe Davis off the field. No, no, I'm sorry, that's going to take Khalil Shakir off the field or shorter. Because Kincaid is coming in to take that spot. Now, let's move it up a little bit further. Now, when they're 11 personnel, Kincaid is still going to be on the field. So now he's getting ready to eat into Gabe Davis' spot. That's what folks don't realize. So what I'm, what you saying, Typhoon? What I'm saying is Kincaid get ready to come in. You got Stefan Diggs as the wide receiver one. And then you're going to have Kincaid at the wide receiver, too. Because what you're doing is you're confusing Kincaid with the tight end. Now, he's a tight end, and that's only by name. That's, that's name only. That is name only.
tight end when you're looking at Kincaid. He's a wide receiver. So Kincaid is going to come in. That's not going to be immediately because you know there's a there's a progression that tight ends need. They got to get acclimated to the blocking schemes. Then they have to get acclimated to the route scheme. So they got two playbooks. You know, these rookie wide receivers come in, they got one playbook. Running back comes in, he's got to learn protections. So he can play on third down for, for pass pro. But the tight end, he's got two, he's got two books he's gotta learn. And he's gotta master those two books. So it's gonna take him a little time. But he's gonna come in, he's gonna he's going to score some sort of fantasy points, but it's not gonna be a huge, huge, huge tick. Not not off the bat. Not from week one. Look at James Cook, for instance. That's Kincaid. That's his road to dominance. You got Kincaid this year. You might use him here and there, especially if Knox goes down. But as long as Knox is healthy and on the field, that's moving King. That's moving Kincaid as a wide receiver. Only he's not there to block. But if Knox goes down, then he's more of a blocking tight, a wide tight end, which is your blocking tight end, and your EF. You tight end, whichever, whichever alphabet number alphabet you want to use for it, then he becomes both. That's when he's the dangerous. But Knox contracts a little too big right now, so Knox is going away. So what's getting ready to happen is Stefan Diggs is going to be your wide receiver one, and Dalton Kincaid is going to be your wide receiver two. So that's going to bump Gabe Davis down. Then, now the blurb said Khalil Shakur and Justin Shorter are fighting over slot duties. No, they fighting over eagle duties, which is which means they're fighting over a chance to get on the field when James Cook is up, when they're empty, when there's no running back. So you got to take the running back off the field to put Shakur and shorter on the field. So if you're looking for Shakir to blow up, you you just totally wrong. You might as well go and get him off your roster now. Unless there's an injury take place. Or put him on the tax squad. It, it's, a, it's a high probability that he ain't happening. I don't care how many targets they're behind. He's not Cole Beasley. He ain't happening. Cole Beasley came out when Dalton Knox was the was the Y and the U tight end. He was it was one tight end doing both positions. Now you got two tight ends doing two positions. So that which means Knox is going to get bumped down. Kincaid is coming in to take over half of his duties. Hopefully, hopefully I'm trying to say this so you can understand what's popping. This is football. See, it's got to make football sense before this can make any kind of fantasy sense. So you can get in your numbers and look and do all this all you want to. Whatever you did in college don't matter. This guy's in the NFL now. When you're looking at college numbers, you're just looking to see if the, if the man can pretty much catch what's thrown to him. You're looking at his catch rate. What his catch rate look like? How many passes did he drop? And you still really can't go by those authentically because some of those targets are 12 uh, 12 feet above his head. It, it it was meant for him, but the quarterback was under duress and when he threw the ball, he got hit. It went towards Kincaid, but it went out of bounds. And Kincaid had no earthly shot at catching the ball, but it's going down as a target and it's going down as a drop when you're looking at it on the numbers. So Kincaid now is your wide receiver too. That's his role coming in. And he's going to learn how to block. Sooner or later, he's going to phase Knox out. And once Knox contracts come up, they're not going to renew Knox contract. Now you got Kincaid as your blocker and wide receiver. Then you can put Shakir or Shorter on the field with Davis and Diggs. If 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 Shakir hasn't lost 
if they had brought in something else to take over Shakir's plot by the end. So what I'm saying is Shakir is pretty much worthless. But the blurbs is making it look like he's in a battle for a starting position. No, he's in a battle for, for empty. All right, let's say if they're down, Buffalo is down 21-3, and it's in the beginning of the fourth quarter. They're pretty much going to take the running back off the field in most situations. They're going to go what we call eagle. Now Shakir is on the field running routes, trying to, trying to, because they're in their hurry up offense. Now it's his, his turn to play. Kincaid's playing. Gabe Davis is playing. Diggs is playing. And Knox is playing. Because Cook's off the field. Cook, Harris, or Latavius Murray, all of them off the field now. So that's what Shakir's role is. So that's where his numbers are going to come from. If you look at the blurb, you would you would think, oh shoot, let me go ahead and give him some targets. Let me get let me put him in as a slot guy, and let me give him all those slot targets. When no, mm -mm, that ain't happening. That ain't what this is. All this all those folks can't play at one time unless you go eagle. Is what I'm trying to. That's the whole point. It's got to make football sense, and that blurb didn't make any kind of football sense. So. So Dalton Kincaid, like I said, he's going to have a trajectory. He's going to come in. He's going to have to elevate himself. The more he learns, the more duties they're going to throw at him, the more passes going to come his way. That's how they do tight ends. Sorry, right, that's just the way that is. Very rare. Even Travis Kells had to grow. Jimmy Graham had to grow. Gronkowski had to grow. You know, and uh, Hernandez and and so forth and so on. These folks got you got to grow into the tight end role. When you're looking at um, Kyle Pitts, everybody think Atlanta's getting ready to run the ball. No, that was the offense last year. It was running the RPOs, uh, read pass option. They was running that offense because they had. Marcus Mariota as the quarterback. You got to give. See, everybody's fussing the coach out, but the coach, everybody's fussing Arthur Smith out because he misused, he did misuse him a little bit, but what he was trying to do was maximize his quarterback. He knew his quarterback was not a passer, so he built his offense around the run game. Now everybody thinks, now that Desmond Ritter is is now in charge of the offense. Everybody thinks they're going to still run this run pass option and they're going to be super dedicated to the run like they was with Mariota. No, that's not happening. This team is getting ready to throw the ball a lot more, especially with B. John on the field. With B. John getting all the attention, them loading the box to try to stop B. John, which is going to open up Drake London, and Kyle Pitts. Once again, Kyle Pitts is not a tight end. This is the year. This is the year for Kyle Pitts. Because if you look at it, when when Ritter came in, Drake London went off. Drake, Drake London was a wide receiver one, but at the same time, Kyle Pitts was hurt at the moment. I think he had a hyper-extended hyper -extended knee or something. So he was on IR. So, with the beauty of it, we never got to see Kyle Pitts work in this offense with Desmond Ritter and Drake London. So now you got B. John added to the mix, which is going to take more, which is going to help Ritter more, which is going to make single coverage more for London and Pitts. London and Pitts are you guys. They get ready to flourish this year. Both of them get ready to have a thousand yards. I'm telling you now. Because the, because that's what the scheme tells me. I ain't looking at no spreadsheet. Because I don't need a spreadsheet. I don't care what they did last year. Last year was a run pass option. It was an RPO system. Pistol. 
This year is a modified West Coast. There's a whole different thing now. There's a whole different game going on in Atlanta now. A lot of folks don't see it. A lot of folks will look at Pitts. Uh, Pitts let me down last year. That's not how fantasy football goes. These, these rosters turn over every year. There's something new added each and every single year. So you got to do this every year. During this time, this is where you find the gym. This is where you get those guys for best ball. Before it happened, because you know, numbers guys won't catch it until Pitt start putting up a hundred, a hundred yards a game. Now they're going to jump out there and tell you, oh, oh yeah, get Pitts. Because now the numbers are out. I'm telling you before the numbers come out. So that's because I'm looking at the football aspect before the numbers come out. And I'm telling you now what the numbers are going to be from what I see. Thousand yards, thousand yard double digit touchdown, thousand yard double digit touchdown for Pitts. I don't know who wide receiver one. Pitts might be wide receiver one. Ah, ah, I can't make. I can't. Ah, ah. Pitts might be wide receiver one, folks. Pitts might be the most dominant wide. Pitts might out outdo Drake London. Pitts is more spectacular than Drake London. Pitts more athletic than Drake London. Pitts faster than Drake London. Drake London can high point the ball better than Pitts, which might come in for a little bit more op- uh, goal line opportunity. But folks, it's going to be a new day in Atlanta. Now that's still going to run the ball. Yes. Yes, they're going to use B. John. Don't get me wrong. But it's not going to be a, a, a total run pass option to help hide the quarterback like it was with Mariota. They get ready to open this thing up, man. Arthur Smith knows what he's doing. That's a heck of a coach. Folks don't see it. I see folks fussing them out. But uh, you better get pissed now. You better get on pissed now. You better get in on London now before this thing pop. Now, this, this was about Dalton Kincaid. But, uh, you know, hey, you got a little extra nuggets in there. It just came out. That's why I like doing these off the cuff. I can sit back and just unload. Now, I'm going to give you one on, I got to do my research on the Chiefs. Because a blurb came out, the character, Kadarius Tony about to ball out. But when you look at that, how much of that is upside? Upside man is dangerous, man. Uh, upside gets y'all dominated in your trades. Because you're looking at upside. Yeah, man. That word upside is killing a lot of fantasy owners and their team bills and their expectations of a player, which means the price of the player. Man, it, it, I see, it is destroying y'all. In the fantasy community. Man, it is destroying y'all. And, and Anthony Richardson. Oh, man, that is getting ready to, to destroy y'all. Y'all seeing all this upside. Man. And you don't have no proof of where the upside is coming from. Only besides him running. Man. You ain't got no passing. You don't have no uh, uh, audibles at the line, reading defenses, strong arm, nothing that suggests he's a QB. I've seen no evidence that every, all your upside is, I don't see where your upside is coming from. You know, where's your football sense of upside? Your upside is coming from uh, him running the ball. And boy, y'all about to be well, y'all about to catch one. Now he he's gonna do some things. He's gonna have some things spectacular, but at the end of the day, 
man, you t- like if you took him over B John, boy, you gonna be, boy, you gonna look. I don't care what format. If you pull the trigger on Anthony Richardson before B John, and it was all due to upside, but you can't, you don't have one finger of evidence of where that upside is coming from. One, here's here's a couple of reasons I gotta roll out. One. When dude declared that he was going pro, first thing out your mouth, he ain't ready. He need to go back to college. That's the first thing you said. Then, he blows the combine up. Oh, now he ready to ball out. What? What changed? What changed from him not being ready for, for college? What the heck makes you mean he ready for the pros? You don't have no evidence there. That's that's where you're losing me at. That's why I gotta get off. I'm gonna let you have that. I, I don't I don't I, I don't I don't see the football sense of your upside. Where is your upside coming from? You got to show me where it's coming from. Pitt's upside is coming from the the, the change in offensive philosophy and the change in quarterback to a passing quarterback instead of a running quarterback. That's where his upside is coming from. Kincaid's upside is coming from the simple fact that he's going to be used as a wide receiver instead of a, a wide tight end. He's not there to block. He's there to run routes. He's there to run the slot. That's where his that's where his upside is coming from. Anthony Richardson. Where is his upside? Where is it coming from? Is it just going to imaginarily up here? I got to pass on that. Especially at the, at the price y'all paying for. I can't pay that. I ain't saying he won't be good. I'm just saying I can't pay that price right now. Now, if he ends up being good, then absolutely. I'll pay for a proof of the money. I'll overpay for that. Ain't nothing wrong with overpaying when you know what you get. But right now, I'm not overpaying the 1.01 or the 1.02 or first quarterback off the board for upside. That you can't prove. If if you could prove to me where that upside is coming from, if you could prove to yourself where the upside is coming from, if if he has a if he if he's going to be in, well, they're going to put him in what they call the the, the RPO offense or AKA the new term six pack offense. So he's there with the guy from with uh, I can't start start or something. The head coach name that that coach. That coached, uh, okay, I see where your upside is. See where you're trying to get your upside from. All right, let me, let me, here's where you think your upside is coming from. The coach that that just finished coach, coaching uh, Hurts in Philadelphia. You see what Hurts did in Philadelphia. You automatically think the the the, uh, the head coach is going to get that same offense and that same. Uh, upgrade out of Richardson is what he got out of Hurts. That's what you're basing this on? Mm-mm. Here's, here's, here's the flaw. Those are two different people. Mm. Let me tell you about Hurts. Hurts put in work. I'm talking about Hurts put in work. Hurts dedicated himself. Hurts wanted, wanted that thing. Now, you go automatically going to say Richardson won? I don't see. That's what I'm saying. It's still a gray area in your upside. I don't know if Anthony Richardson has been given everything in his life and if he's just going to, you know, be pampered. Like I told you on the last podcast, they already misusing him because he's already deemed to start this year. So he ain't even got to earn it. That's all they already making a mistake. He ain't, he ain't even went to practice yet. And they already mishandling, dropping the ball on him. You got to earn your position. What you see from Bryce Young? Well, we don't know if we're going to start him yet. But you're looking for Levin. Well, we're not starting him yet. Actually, he's quarterback number three. He's behind Malik Willis. You just can't come in there like they did RG3. You coming in and just 
give it to him, then the whole team gonna hate him. Especially if he can't if he can't produce. Because one thing you can't do to those guys, man, you can't project a guy to be your starter and everybody in that locker room know that dude can't play. Or everybody in that locker room know that dude ain't ready. They throw Anthony Richardson out there and that whole that whole locker room know that dude ain't ready. And they giving him his job. What's supposed to be beautiful, your beautiful upside, is gone. All right, we out.